I stopped all that. Now it's like, let me be the one. And I, I know I don't like it, but let me be the one. I lose control. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardier. I am Judah. 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 Uh, uh. Judah and the lion's den. No? What am I thinking of? The Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah? Mm -hmm. There's a song or something I'm trying to think of. It has to be, probably. Yeah. Um, This year is Frank. I didn't realize we're kind of matching. We both got the tan hats on. Red shirts. We all found reds. Well, you're wearing tie-dye. But kind of. Frank and I are matching. Oh, we look like we're at the Twins Festival. You used to be touching him a lot in the older podcast. Yesterday you were. Oh, was I? Yeah. It's like a comfort thing. (laughs) Don't say that. (laughs) It's my comfort blanket. I think it's just mindlessly... You no, because it's like I. No, it's comfort. Yeah, it's not like I just. I, I like touch his ears. I was trying to help you. <laughs> I rub his cheeks. It's un- unconventional. It is unconventional. It's skin to skin contact, it's, which is very important. It we, is. We lost a lot of that during COVID. It is. And maybe that's what it was, because we were podcasting all through COVID, mm-hmm. and like, was this my only <laughs> skin contact? And like, we've created a bond. It's true. Even if you adopt a baby, um, uh, we'll never have the same connection. <laughs> As Frank and I have. No, not you. When people adopt babies, if you can get the baby as soon as it's born, even even not freshly born, but anyway, uh, you didn't biologically get, give birth to the baby or you're not the father of the baby, but um, they do still suggest you take off your shirt and you take the baby's skin and your skin and it literally is somehow bonding. I feel like that would make me uncomfortable. With your baby? Just skin to skin contact. With a baby. I don't like I don't like skin to skin contact with anyone. Like, you, you don't say, shake hands with people? I do, but it's as short as it can be. Really? Like I don't even like you ever hug someone and your cheeks rub a little bit too much. <clears throat> I'm not a hugger and I yeah, well, and I and I I'm not a hugger. I want to um move somewhere I think in Asia. Okay. Um could be generalized here, but I know some some um cultures some Asian cultures very little touching at all that's where like sort of the bow comes from and stuff okay. like there's not uh, americans and not, i don't even say it's americans i would say europeans like the italians yeah, true, the, true. the italians and the well, spanish that, and then those people in america made it really like let's all like rub each other i wonder and, if native americans are touchy i don't know we'll have to find out we'll have to find out should we ask some or do like i can't find any but i i have a lot of books on native americans okay yeah but no i know in asian cultures they don't touch a lot and i think i you know how earlier we said because that's the, that's the thing about it. So whenever I say I don't like touching, yeah, it people will be like, "Oh, your girlfriend must love you." I oh, know, and it's the same thing with in German tradition. Yeah, you don't say I love you. Do to they your... touch? That would be something to know about. That would be well. something to know. You research the Germans, and I'll research the Native Americans. I think just off the bat, I don't think they touch as much. Mm-mm. Um, but I love you. They don't. They only. They do say it. But they only say it so when it's it like more true meaning. Quality over quantity. Yeah, not even to like a new girlfriend or a girlfriend. It's like it's a big deal. And it's like touching. I want, I don't want to like make it seem like it's a big deal. We can finally embrace. But it's like it's just a bit too much casually. Um, I don't know what is going on. Why I don't like it. Okay. So I never liked it. I, yeah. I didn't like and I And I had extremely demonstrative parents. Is that the word? That sounds awful. No, like they demonstrated demonstrative their love. demonstrative i don't know but you're probably right but yeah yeah i so what i'm saying is what i it, i was hugged and um handheld and um so forth i didn't like it as a child and then i grew up and i didn't like it as a young person and as a as a after the young person stage and i've been guilted into doing it yeah and same. and and i have um i have on and off again times in my life Sometimes I'm stricter about not caring yeah. Um, because it's not making me feel comfortable, so I don't do it. But then just to let people know, most, mostly all of my hugs are because I felt – I put my own feelings aside and I said I like they want me to hug yeah. them. No, that's that's how I feel. Um, but I don't – I'm tired of thinking there's something wrong with me or no, that – there's not. Or that I'm a mean person or – You're not. Maybe I'm just saying that because I'm not either. But – uh, yeah, it's it's totally peer pressure. More than peer pressure sounds like, if you don't hug me, I'll, uh, but it's like, uh, I I think 
it's like the exact opposite of other people where they don't mind if you don't hug mm-hmm. them, but they see it as like they don't want to hug me. Yeah. And and I'm just like, and so I hate that. And so I, I end up falling into a category of, of hugging and stuff because it almost makes it more awkward if I'm like, all right, bye. And like, they did it like slightly and then, oh, okay. Um, I know. And it's, like, it's so awkward. And I ruined it because, I, you know, like I said, I used to be stricter. And so people got it and they would be yeah. like, oh, oh, she doesn't hug. And then I'll be like, it's okay. And then I'll do it. And I literally made it worse because now people go like, are, what? are we doing yeah. that? You know? And you and I, I feel, have a bad combination of being a people pleaser yeah. who doesn't like to hug. Because yeah. if you're just a person who doesn't like to hug and you're just like yourself and you're like, they'll get over it. You don't care. But like we, we actually don't want the person to feel bad so it's like yeah like i said i put aside my own comfort and i'll say like i'll hug you and guess what else i'm terrible at it yeah no i'm getting better but i found myself doing the opposite because as a big strapping man Mm -hmm. it's like i've learned because my biggest thing is like let me just Get through life without any awkward situation. <laughs> that's impossible. Yeah, well, I, so that's I, a terrible goal. I do my best. That's a terrible goal to set for you. And so, so there's two things going on. There's like my personal wants. Yes. And then there's awkward situations. <laughs> my personal want of not being touched. Yeah. Creates some awkward situations. Mm-hmm. Then you get the inverse where it's like, okay, if they try to hug me, then I'll I'll just do it. But then it's like that's when you get that like, are we doing this? I don't. I know. So what I've recently gotten into is, I'm an initiator. I don't want to be, but I'll, I, goodbye. That'll I go, never be me. I, I walk in, I go for the handshake. Cause even to, I went to a school for an interview and there was like a, a priest guy and like, he like didn't go for the handshake and I didn't. And then it was just like, you just stand there for a second. And, and so I'm like, I, I stopped all that. Now it's like, let me be the one. And I, I know I don't like it, but let me be the one. <laughs> I lose control. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. yeah so now i initiate it and so now people might see me as a hugger and a handshaker and guess what i'll never be inside <laughs> don't judge a hugger by the hug yeah yeah they might not want to be doing i've it. conformed I've, i just feel mad because if you can't beat them join them i it? love deeply and spiritually yeah. and 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 um people say like well you need to prove it yeah and it's like okay here Let's press flesh. Yeah, you know. And it's it, like, I love you so much, and like spiritually. And I, I am happy to see you. And I'm sad when you leave. But people don't believe it unless I'm, I'm like doing something. Yeah. Oh, like, like I can't use my, 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 my words or my kindness or my aura. My thoughts, my I prayers, need to my, use my, my energy. My big water sack of yeah. a body. <laughs> That's what love is. That's not what love is. No. Keep the Irish exit. Slip Keep the out. Irish exit. I believe in the Irish exit big time. My biggest thing is I don't really believe in goodbyes. How about that hot take? Colt, I don't believe in goodbye. I, I don't like the the emphasis we put on goodbyes. Yeah. To the smallest extent of. Well, we're always measuring things. It's like it's starting. Yeah. It's ending. It's ending. Yeah. It's ended. Make, make a, make, everyone make a note. It's ended. We have to goodbye now. You yeah. Know. No, it's like. Tenuous. Everything's fluid, you know. Everything's fluid. It, it, they're, they're, what are we? What are we putting these timestamps on? Yeah. Punch in, punch. Oh, did you punch out? <laughs> no, nope, bring it in. Like, <laughs> come on. It's like it's we're, it's all fluid. Where do you work? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. Sorry. I know, I know. <laughs> That's why I hate going to work. Um, and even even death, even death. Right. Uh, we we treat that as a or both. We treat it as a goodbye, and also, I didn't get to say anything nice to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, yeah, because you've created this 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 facade that everything needs an end, and mm-hmm. I didn't have the correct goodbye this right. time. It's like, well, if you stop putting so much emphasis on each and every goodbye and just enjoy it every moment that you're together or not together, then you'll be a better person. You know, and and I, and, and I feel that's true. And um, I don't want to be I don't want to be too harsh and say that it's hypocritical for people to think otherwise. So I won't say it, but I'll just leave it there. Maybe someone will pick it up. But like Frank can't hug him because he has no arms. And and um if and if he could speak, you would say he would say, I'm sorry, I can't hug you because I don't have arms. And you'd be like, no problem. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? You don't need I don't need your arms. Say he can't speak. He can't. So he'll say if he could give us telepathy, he'd say, I'm sorry. Um, He could like write something. That, oh, he has no arms. No arms. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry. 
and, and like this is obviously he's a he's a dummy he's not real spencer <laughs> he's, he's very but, smart <clears throat> there's people who can't speak and they say i'm sorry i can't i can no longer tell you i love you you know <laughs> I'm too I'm too much with the hands. You, you don't yeah. need to use your voice to tell me you love me. People would tell you all the things that I could say, right? But in but then once you can, I can speak and I do have arms. It's like, okay, well then use them. And it's like, well, why was it true a second ago that if I didn't have arms? Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a Go second. Go ahead. All right, cuz we have a very similar um what's the word? unpopular opinion on this issue. Yes. So you're speaking for the masses right now. I'm speaking for the masses. Okay. What would they say? More than that. It's like the same way we're saying what we perceive as love. People aren't lying. Like I I took a whole class on on love languages and physical touch Mm. is like, like that is how someone perceives love. And so even if they can understand, right? Like you, you can rationalize with them and they can say, I know you don't hug. I know you, I know that it's it's just not your thing. It's like that will never change for them to have them feel loved. Mm-hmm. And so is that something to think about? I mean, like, you know, we all have our different love languages and like, I, like you know, mine's gifts and stuff. And it's like there is there there is the aspect of is it a little bit selfish to only well i don't know and that's why i'm always torn should i give the person what they want yeah but this is what i say i think my life is easier because i don't um equate love with physicality so therefore you talked about death so when i lose somebody i don't say like if i could only hug them again if i could only um hold their hand again you know it's like i I still have that connection because all during life, I was acknowledging the connection, yeah. the, the, the non-physical connection that I have with people. And that I like, because if you go from, we have to be holding hands and, and sitting next to each other and, you know, braiding each other's hair. And then that's cut. We, our love is gone. Yeah. But like all my physical life, this temporary human that, that I'm in, where I'm, I'm constantly practicing, like, it's okay. Like, because the energy is here. The love is here. The spiritual. Which love. is why. Uh, gift giving is the greatest love language. <laughs> I, 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 how? That's that's because. Oh my! I, oh my gosh! We have a podcast on it, and you can watch it. Okay, but it's nothing about the tangible gift. Okay. The idea. Oh, it's the thought. This the thought. It's, the thought that, that it's, a, it's quite literally <laughs> the thought that counts. The only reason I, I I could care less about any gift that's ever been given to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've enjoyed gifts that have been given to me, but. I always say the other love languages, it's it's something that you can practice when you're with the person and that's nice. But, you know, I can go on a hinge date tonight and practice all of them. What I think makes, which I mean, obviously you can, you can just like buy a gift and like, oh, they'll like this. Mm-hmm. But for me, in each love language's truest form, gift giving represents loving that person when they're not around. Loving, like having that person on your mind. Yeah. If they're not in front of that's you. That's true. You're in front of me right now. So it's like, if 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 we, all the love languages can be, I can you're like hey can you help me with this absolutely I I care about you enough um oh I need a shoulder to cry on oh okay well I'm right here right each one of these things where gift giving is I am at the store or not even I'm I'm like, gift giving has nothing to do with like if I'm walking through a meadow I don't know why I'm frolicking through a meadow <laughs> and I see a flower and I'm like oh I remember. That Verona, like the tiger lilies. The tiger lily? You're in a wild meadow and you're going to say tiger lily? What would you see in the wild field where you could see at the side of a road anywhere? Oh, a, in um, a uh, morning glory. No? No. Uh, Do you even know what color it is? Yellow. Dandy- oh my gosh! Dandelion. I am, this is this is dandelion. Okay, so uh, I, I don't know what my love language is, but maybe maybe people not knowing what my favorite flower is is one or is, is not it. A sunflower. It's a rose. Blue and it's chicory, and it grows wild. It's called chicory. It's called chicory. I knew that. I, I was thinking because yeah, because you like chico sticks and <laughs> that's chicory. Not, <laughs> that's not. But that which, is which came, sticks which came first? You like chico sticks and then you started liking chicory. Chicory. Every time you're driving, you see the pale blue, dainty flowers. I thought that was more 
Exactly. So someone who loved you. <laughs> No, no, that I like chicory. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? So yeah, so to so chicory, it's like, would you rather someone like, hey, hug you or something, or it's like you're not even there. And you like, know what? Wait, I, we just made a really good example right now. I was kidding when I said, "How dare you?" Yeah. But <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you came back with a dandelion and you were like, "I remember, I remember you like the flowers that grow on the side of the road," even though it's it's not, it shouldn't be yeah. dandelion. It's chicory. That would mean a lot to me. Yeah. Because you did think of me and like, yeah, you didn't get the color right or the flower right or anything. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. Because it wasn't about the chicory. And that's why I feel like it's not so much about the gift. It's not like, oh, like, I, I, what's it called? Here's a, a new Rolex. And it's right. like, you don't like Rolexes. And it's like, but I wanted to give it to you. No. It's like the idea mm-hmm. of loving someone when they're not present yeah and that the reason why that's true love and it's the best love language is because that's the love that doesn't die right like yeah. when someone passes away how many loved ones do we have that are gone and we see things or, or we do things in memory of them and you it's like what? you're right you love them when they're not around you can't talk you can't do anything else you can't do service for them you can't do this to them but you can you can live with that that love of when they're not present you're absolutely right and again you should practice that in life because so if you, you know what, it makes no sense to ever pick me chicory either because it, it dies pretty much as soon as you pick it and it, it's not a, it's not a vase flower. So, but if I was dead or lived in, you know, Taiwan and you didn't see me, you just seeing the chicory and being like, oh, like she, yeah. she would like that. You don't, I don't have to, you never have to be passed to me. So yeah. that, so you could still do that. So well, know. yeah, no, the, exactly. Cause, mm-hmm. Cause the gift giving, right. That's just. For me, if someone gets me a gift, the, the gift doesn't matter. What is what warms the heart is knowing yes. the person was thinking about me yes. when I wasn't there. Yeah. And so obviously then the the, the tangibility of it, because I am here, is, well, now I know. Now, now the whole story comes together. Right. But for someone who passed, all that good stuff is still happening. All, all the stuff that matters of you're still, you're still on that person's mind. They're loving you from afar. Whether you're in the room and it's like giving them a back rub yeah, or not. Right. No, Sierra, um, our friend Sierra, she had the back operation. We talked about her before. She made um, our cups. She made our car sign. Yeah. Um, recently, she told me, I think she was in Barnes & Noble. And she's like, oh, I, saw, I can't remember what the thing was. She's like, I saw, and I, I was thinking I would get it for you, but like I didn't. And I, and I was like, I was touched. And guess what? Also, right now, I don't remember what it was. Yeah. But I remember exactly. that it happened. And um, I mean, not now that now. So that's my positive take. The negative take is it can't be faked, right? Like, yeah, obviously gift giving can be faked, right? You can cheat on someone and yeah. buy them flowers. But I'm saying that idea of thinking about someone when they're mm-hmm. not there, like all the other ones, you can almost trick it, whether it's lust or or whatever, you can trick yourself into thinking oh this is love and then you go and you complete you start living your life you dance with another girl you can't even remember well, the, the girl you were with yesterday but there's that difference when it's like she's on your mind but let me He's tell you let mind. me ask you one They're more on thing mind. one more thing and then we have to go to walk through thursday yes <laughs> um one more thing S- just this one question you are a, a businessman you have an, an administrative assistant and you have a girlfriend now, the girlfriend pops in your mind and you're like, ooh, and you say to the administrative assistant, get her something and send it. Is this good or is this not good? You did think of her, but you didn't get it. But also, tell me. No, um, I don't think it's good. It's not. Um, the same way. Different as, motivation. Or- yeah. I mean, the, the same. it's different motivation. And it's like uh, physical touch is a, is a real love language. If you ha- are, are in a committed relationship, it doesn't just mean like. But love is love. You're like, I, I I see someone and I just want to give them a hug and a back rub. <laughs> and it's like, no, yeah, well, you know, you're supposed to, you know, you can, you can love someone without romantically loving them. Mm-hmm. And gifts are the same way. Gifts can be a little bit too intimate for people that, like, if you're not meant to be committed for them. Okay. Thinking about someone, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's like having, having love for people is different than, you know, practicing love with every like practicing i didn't say love. to get the administrative assistant a gift oh. i said you thought I, that's what i said i thought you were like you were spawning an affair no spencer okay. that's why i was like wait i can't follow your, you yeah. i'm saying you're busy yeah so you tell carol 
Carol, get I, I need to get a present for um for Mindy. Carol, your assistant buys the present. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I my arms are longer and longer these days. I mean, like, like as long as it's from the same place. Like I said, okay. like if it's like oh, what day is it? It's our anniversary. Uh send her flower like no like the the purpose of it in its purest form. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't mean need to be like I I hiked the tallest <laughs> mountain to get this flower. Okay. It's simply you're on so my mind okay. whether you're here or not. Okay. I have love for you not because you're the, like we're on an island together okay. and it's like might as well. Right. I love you because I can be surrounded by women, see one of their necklaces and not think that's a nice looking necklace thinking I should get one of those for my girlfriend. Do you want to do a walk through Thursday? No. All right. Let's just do it because um, four days ago, we we, ha- we do the polls on Instagram. And four days ago, the, the, the verse that I picked didn't didn't do well. And um, I don't want to, I don't need to get out a dissection um, thing to, fig- I just, but I just want to tell people what it meant in case they said, why did you pick that weird <laughs> you want to you want to defend yourself i want to defend myself right, that's fair All well right. anyway guys it is thursday that is why frank has a polo on except i don't think it's a polo it is i can't even tell what is a polo just a type of yeah a collared shirt? a collared two button shorts you have long sleeve polo it's now, this now is that i know but is that like shirt. is that like a band-aid thing like what came so polo brand came oh, after right it's probably like a golf shirt or something yeah so yeah yeah like a polo okay. must have made them popular polo mm-hmm. was known for them okay right yeah i don't know what that is it's walk through thursday roll the intro welcome back hope you're having fun because walk through wednesday just begun what's going on guys it is walk through thursday the best time of the week what we do on Walk Through Thursday, we pick a Bible verse. I'm not going to go into it too much because you basically already explained right. the verse we're doing. But we're just going to go through it. We're going to learn something. Um, check out the Instagram polls. We've been doing Genesis. Um, Genesis versus Genesis. First person to seven wins. Right. Um, you know, just always make gambling bets <laughs> over the Bible. That We're going to get our table flipped. I know. Um. Yeah, so let's just get into it. So I said we're reading from Genesis. But what from Genesis? I don't know. The losing verse. <laughs> the losing verse. Some people voted for it. And thank you for the, to 33% of people who voted for it. I like those numbers. 33 and 67. Um, all right. So this is Genesis 49.10. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come and the obedience of the nations shall be his. Okay. So it's probably too deep for the fun little polls that we do that just say, yeah. you know. Are you, Ash? Are you? Don't are be you, afraid. What's the word? Um, oh, uh, alienating. No, when you make someone feel dumb. Oh, I don't uh, know. Are you something, something me? I don't know, but. Are you, oh, come on. It's, I want, I, it's not ostracizing. Are you patronizing? Patronizing. Are you me. patronizing our viewers and saying that they can't see deep? Into the verses. Yeah, because 67% um, went with a more vengeful. Well, maybe um, you couldn't see the deepness <laughs> of that one. Okay. So um, this is taken from, uh, is it Abraham? He's, 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 he's telling his sons, um, all the sons, this is what your, your, their inheritance is. Yeah. And what will happen to them. And um, some of them, it's, pretty, it's, it's not good. It's like, you were bad. So yeah. your generation is going to, you know. But when he gets to um, Judah, he makes this statement: "The scepter from the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the, nor, nor the ruler's feet staff. Sorry, the, nor, <laughs> the ruler's staff from between his feet. Um, and either before the line before it or after it mention, mentions the lion. Um, so it's the lion of Judah. And okay, so this is the part which is referring to Jesus. And I don't know if people knew that because we are doing Genesis, which is Old Testament um, until." He to whom it belongs shall come. So mm-hmm. it's Jesus coming and the obedience of the nations shall be his. Um, and it just, I find if people like, we're always introducing them to the Bible. And if you want to uh, look into stories that are a little deeper than your regular um, children's Bible yeah. um, stories. Um, and the connection. So if you go from that, which is, um, what was it? Genesis. What was it? Genesis something. 
Oh, Genesis 49.10. Genesis 49.10. Um, then you can go to Revelation 5.5. 5. Okay. Revelation 5.5. 5. Uh, it says, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. So, you know, all the way in Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And, there, and he's saying the scepter will stay with you. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. And it's saying that it stayed all the way through there and now it is um for the final days to be revealed so, oh so wait still with judah until revelation um can you read revelation one more time revelation says uh then one of the elders said to me do not weep see the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals he well jesus has already conquered because yeah. of um when he um came but Obviously, in Revelation, he comes back again to, yeah. to um, so he's already conquered, but then he's going to open the seven seals at that time. But yeah, so it's the line of Judah. And then just one more thing, which I'm not familiar with, so I probably shouldn't bring it up, but Rastafarianism. Oh. Very much into the line of Judah. And if you if you can picture in your mind, there's always a lion uh, yeah. um, in uh, Rastafarianism and... Uh, when you said there's a song, they hit, there's lots of like reggae songs yeah. and stuff about it. Yeah. And um, not really sure. I think they might think, I don't want to talk for them, but I think they might have thought he came back already in someone else or something. But Bob Marley. Yeah, maybe. He's like, no, I think it was, I think it was the, he's like the king of Ethiopia or something. Uh, they believed was the Lion of Judah. And, and um, um, generally, I just think of Rastafarianism as like Jah is God. And then we can just be similar um, on that level. Yeah. But they're not exactly an Abrahamic religion. They're they're different. Yeah. They so. have their own beliefs. Yeah. But yeah, it's a good verse. Um, early on. You know, on, I love and, and, the, the um, correlating yeah, ones. Yeah, I know. I was talking to someone recently and, and they were saying, um, we, were we were talking Bible, you know. That's what I do. Mm, off yeah, yeah. And they were saying like, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm just big interest into the Gospels. Like, I kind of stick with the Gospels. And I'm like, like, you know, just if Jesus is there, that's what I want. And I'm like, that's great and all. Yeah. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But the nice thing, like, that's why I would never, like, I always put the Old Testament with the New Testament because I think people put a big wall in between them, right? Like, it's like, right. there was this, there was that. There right. was that God and then there was this God. Yeah. And it's like, from Genesis, the very first book, there's these lines that are drawn and it's like, it's it's i don't know if there's any star wars fans right like it's like it, it quite literally is like the way the star wars came out where you got you know, four five and six and then you got one two and three that filled in everything right and there's all these lines like so you can watch one two and three especially everyone knows the jesus story you know you know what happens but when right. you're watching the prequels you, you see the first in the in the first um movie episode one right you see little anakin skywalker i'm getting real nerdy i know <laughs> no. you see little anakin skywalker that you know from the very last movie that you thought that was was darth vader and then it's like you see oh he, this has been from the very beginning right. predestined to all happen in the very end yeah and it's the same way with the bible the bible star wars they're the same yeah that's that's if you take nothing else take that yeah um there's uh, the prodigal son um, <laughs> that's funny yeah. i'm sure well, someone's done this yeah. yeah i'm sure oh yeah i'm sure you can look into it but yeah so um that's our that's our podcast mm -hmm. um bring it in come on give us a hug vote G for me because give us a hug it's it's four two at this point yeah, vote for her. Actually, I don't know. Keep voting for me. First to seven wins, and the uh, second person has to. We should make the like you have to like do a real you know, bad punishment. No, yeah, we don't have any. We don't have a prize. Like you said, gambling, but we don't even. We're not even. We have nothing's on the. Nothing's. The prize is eternal life. But One it's of funny. Us will go to hell. Like we talked about in the beginning, I don't want to hug. You don't want to hug, but um, you're willing to do it, and I'm like, no, I'm not. Well, it seems that way with the verses that I'm not willing to give up my verses that aren't crowd favorites yeah. and you just go for the crowd favorite because i know that they're all winners and so what that's does it matter? true I, I mean yeah of course what does it matter all right guys peace